Okay, this is GCSE RS. Welcome. Uh, revision uh, on Buddhist beliefs and teachings. Educas three world religion, and this is video five of five videos uh, going through the Buddhist beliefs and teachings section. So, in this video, we're going to look at arhats and bodhisattvas, pure land Buddhism, and a range of ideas in terms of Buddhist ethical teachings. So first of all, arhats, the ideal of Theravada Buddhism. Uh, an arhat is the spiritual ideal in Theravada Buddhism. An arhat is, uh, the word means a worthy one, a perfected person. Someone who has shown uh, their dedication to the Buddha and his teachings by extinguishing the three poisons from their lives and has become thus enlightened like the Buddha. In Theravada Buddhism, only monastics uh, would be considered able to become an arhat. And there are many examples of the Pali Canon of arhats, including the Buddha's father and women, Kisigotama, uh, the story we told earlier. An arhat will not return to samsara after death. They will achieve pari nibbana, meaning nibbana without remainder. One teaching about arhatship is that arhats no longer have a worldly uh, existence. Instead, they have achieved Nibbana. So the Pali Canon says there is no more worldly existence for the Arhat who is wholly free. Great quote. This means Arhats have overcome the three poisons and attained their ultimate goal, Nibbana. One teaching about Arhatship is it's, Arhatship is gained by following the eightfold path. This means following the threefold way, meditation, wisdom and morality, the higher path kind of path. A Buddhist may be able to achieve their destiny of becoming an arhat. This is because these eight actions, these eight steps, these eight trainings uh, you do all together, ascribed by the Buddha, help an individual overcome the three poisons. Arhatship may encourage Bud a Buddhist to follow uh, the Buddha's Dharma or truth. I take refuge in the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha. Today this means a Buddhist may follow Buddhist teaching like the Eightfold Path because um, uh, because using it in the three folds of the, the path, wisdom, morality, and meditation, it aids them in overcoming three poisons, thus permitting them to attain human destiny, Nibbana. Our hardship may encourage a Buddhist to join the Sangha, the Sangha um, the, of the Buddhist community. Uh, they may remove themselves from mainstream society, renounce their householder life, join a monastic community, allow them to focus on the Buddha's Dharma and engage in extensive meditation as a Theravada Buddhist. Well, what about Mahayana? What's the ideal of Mahayana Buddhism? Well, in Mahayana Buddhism, the spiritual idea is to become a, a Bodhisattva, uh, an enlightened being who choose to return to samsara. This is the greater enlightenment, as it's called. One of two ideas, of basically, of enlightenment in, in Mahayana. Motivated by compassion in order to help unenlightened beings escape suffering. They take a vow, the vow of the Bodhisattva. And we find this vow from the earliest literature in Mahayana. The vow is, however many innumerable sentient beings there are, I vow to save them all. The path to become a bodhisattva means completing the six perfections, the paramitas, the virtues of patience, energy, wisdom, morality, generosity, meditation. We'll look at it a bit later. One teaching about the bodhisattva path is the bodhisattva's aim to delay their own enlightenment, to help others. And this is supported by the bodhisattva vow. Zen uh, vows state, for example, beings are numberless, I vow to free them. So this means the Bodhisattva shows compassion in aiding the welfare of other beings. The Bodhisattva must attain these six qualities or perfections. Uh, a Tibetan Buddhist teacher called uh, Thrungpa says, a Bodhisattva is simply a person who perfects the six qualities, generosity, morality, patience, energy, meditation, wisdom. This means a Buddhist on the Bodhisattva path may be charitable to show their karuna to others. We'll look at this word in a minute, karuna or compassion, meaning love and action. The Bodhisattva path may encourage a Buddhist to reflect, consider the suffering in the world. Today, this means that Buddhists entering the path of the Bodhisattva may consider the suffering to ignite their feelings of 
compassion, karuna. They may show generosity, dana, to help others overcome their suffering, i.e. charity work. The path, the Bodhisattva path, may encourage the Buddhists to engage in Buddhist practices. That might mean the Buddhists may perform meditation to develop concentration awareness to help them along the path. They may visualize, if they're Tibetan, the uh, Bodhisattva to help them on their journey, for example, Avalokitesvara, or Manjurasi, the transcendent Bodhisattvas of compassion, Avalokitesvara, and wisdom, Manjurasi. So what about these transcendent bodhisattvas well remember there's the idea that there, the buddha had three bodies the historical buddha who lived on earth there's one body of the buddha the transcendent buddha who lives in heaven and then lastly the idea of the truth buddha the buddha that is the truth within all of us that is the, the that is the ultimate truth as it were and for many mahayana buddhists they 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 think there are two things you need to be enlightened as it were you need wisdom and you need compassion and one without the other is, is not is not good and so the analogy of the twin wings of a bird is often used now the buddha is still there mahayana claim in the heavenly realm theravada reject this he's dead and gone but mahayana think he's up there in the transcendent realm and he's an important person but there are other important transcendent beings like Avalokitesvara and especially Manjurasi, the Bodhisattva of Wisdom. Now his name means gentle glory in Sanskrit. And you see him on the right here depicted he's sitting on the lotus flower and that is an important universal symbol of wisdom and knowledge. Uh, you wouldn't have somebody important. It's a symbol of authority and of Buddhist authority. Um, such an important image in Buddhism from the birth of the Buddha through to his enlightenment through to his death, as it were. It comes up in all of the stories of Buddhism. Um, why is he holding a, a flaming sword? Well, so he can cut away your false thinking, help you realize the more transcendent, perfected wisdom of Mahayana. Now in this picture, he's not, but in often he's, he's in, in some of the pictures he showed depicting holding a book. Now this would be the more perfected wisdom of Mahayana, the Prajna. Per perimeter. Remember, perimeter means perfection, prajna, wisdom, uh, sutra. So one then to a very unusual, special kind of Mahayana Buddhism, one of the many groups that developed Pure Land Buddhism, a branch that began in China and then moved to Japan, where today it's the biggest form of Buddhism. Pure Land Buddhists believe this guy, Minataba, many, many countless eons of vast amounts of time, uh, over many lifetimes, developed a great storehouse of merit. His puna, his merit making was so successful, he became hugely rich in merit. So much so that he could build his own world, his own afterlife, his own heaven, described as a paradise in the west of the universe, the Shukavati, a land full of bliss and delight and joy. and uh, pure land buddhists love creating pictures of this pure land and the the book the pure land book the longer shukavatiya uya sutra describes at great length and in detail the wonders of the pure land how the trees and flowers are made from precious metals and stones how it emits perfumes of sandalwood and so on and so this is a, a, a kind of a place of desire to get to Rebirth in the Pure Land is thought to bring about as well a great chance of enlightenment. In fact, not just a chance, almost a certainty. If you get there, um, the, the Minataba will help you. It's a place free of suffering. And we live in the world of Mapo or of, of pain and suffering here. And it's the opposite. It's a place of delight with many other Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. So it's an alternative route to enlightenment. Rather than developing complex religious and meditative practices as other Mahayana do, all Pure Lands have to do to achieve rebirth in the Pure Land is to show complete and unwavering faith in Minitaba Buddha. So they would chant his name. They would put faith in him all day long, every day. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. is their chant over and over, all day long. They keep his name at the forefront of their mind 
keeping a meaning tab at their mind shows their devotion to him. And if they die with his name in their lips, they can be certain of getting to the pure land to achieve rebirth in the pure land of Aminitaba, of infinite light. And there immediately he will help them become enlightened. On then to ethical, ethical teachings. At the root of all ethical teachings, perhaps, is the idea of karma, meaning action, or better, that actions have consequences, not just in this life, but in the next life, in the afterlife, uh, it, when you're reborn into your new existence. Um, it's this natural law, not of gravity, of Newtonian cause and effect, but it is a natural law that is thought to operate in the universe of life, death and rebirth, samsara. And Buddhists believe that every action, even our thoughts and mental impulses, uh, has consequences. So our intentions are, are really important. So it's really important uh, to have the right thoughts, the right, and as well as the right actions. Actions that bring around positive karma are thought skillful, a kusla. And actions which bring about negative karma are thought to be a kusla, unskillful. So especially Theravada are very keen to develop a life of skillful action. They focus on performing skillful actions in order to get positive karma. And to do this, ordinary Buddhists especially focus on puna or merit making. Uh, puna means merit making. Making merit means a Buddha will achieve a good rebirth. So ethics is really important in, in Buddhism. One of the Dhammapada statements it says, to avoid evil and cultivate good, and to cleanse one mind, this is the teaching of the Buddha. Basically, um, avoiding evil, cultivating good, cleansing mind, that is getting rid of the greed, hatred and ignorance and, and achieving enlightenment, in other words. One reason calm is important because it impacts, it directs a Buddhist's life. Uh, the Pali Canon further says, if one speaks or acts with a wicked mind, because of that, pain follows one. If one speaks and acts with a good mind, because of that, happiness follows one. So the Buddha will try and live their life performing skillful actions, generosity, dana, loving kindness, karuna, and the, the four great Brahma Viharas, to accumulate positive karmic merit. Another key idea is metta. Uh, metta means love. Um, Loving kindness, it's one of the four, the four sublime mental states, along with karuna, uh, mardita, sympathetic joy, and uh, equanimity, peacefulness. Um, so Buddhist ethical teaching that Buddhists should develop this mental quality of kindness towards all sentient beings. That's the right way of thinking. It's a mental quality of kindness towards all mental sentient beings. And you develop this through metta bhavna or metta meditation to develop this quality. Uh, you might do this in groups of people. Firstly, you you say to yourself, "I, you know, may I know love." Then you, you think about your loved ones and may I know love. And then you think of a neutral person and someone you dislike. And eventually, all of the world, everyone, you may everyone know love and compassion. So developing the four sublime states is what the Buddha taught all Buddhists, not even, and not just, and Theravada would claim not just the ordained, but the laity. And these states explain how a Buddha would act towards others and themselves. And by acting this way, it's considered skillful. It will reduce suffering, dukkha in the world. One reason metta is important is because it can have a positive effect on society. Uh, the Pali Canon says one should cultivate towards all beings in all the world, loving kindness. This means if cultivated metta would rid the world of the three poisons, greed, hatred, and ignorance, and thus reducing the world of suffering. A further word is karuna. We've mentioned it already. It's slightly different to metta. It's more like charity, compassion. Um, it is one of the four sublime states, along with metta, metta, karuna, uh, sympathetic joy, mardita, and uh, equanimity, kind of calmness. In Buddhism, this is a feeling and often a better an action of concern in response to a specific example of suffering. So you see suffering and you feel karuna. 
Perhaps this is what the Buddha experienced in the second watch of the night. He saw all beings caught in a cycle of some sort and felt for them. Uh, it's a sense of compassion when there are examples of suffering in the world. So why is it important? Because it's one of, another one of the four sublime states the Buddha taught, and these states explain how Buddha should act towards themselves and others, and it's considered skillful to develop uh, and to reduce suffering dukkha in the world. And it can have a positive effect on society. The Dalai Lama says, the key to a happier and more successful world is the growth of karuna, compassion. And so the Tibetan Buddhists like Dalai Lama set up a charity called Rokpa, which is a charity founded on karuna, compassion. The five precepts are a key uh, component. They are, in fact, part of the Eightfold Path. The, the fourth stage of the Eightfold Path is right action. And right action is composed of these five precepts. And these are not like the Ten Commandments, they're not rules. Um, they're more like guidelines on how to act so that, that is, in a way, skillful. It reduces suffering to yourself and to others. It's a code of conduct, in, in, in a way. And so they're phrased negatively. You refrain from or you abstain from harming living beings, taking what's not freely given, harming from sensual misconduct, from false speech and from intoxicants that lead to heedlessness. And they all needed, they all work together. They offer guidelines, um, not just for ordinary people, but for monastics as well, although they have a, a wider set of rules, the 10 precepts. In fact, whole lists of rules called the Patmokha for the Buddhist monk. One uh, Buddhist monk, Thanissaros, says the five precepts are formulated in such a way that they provide a practice. Notice that this is not just knowledge, it's a practice, a clear set of standards and things you should do in your life, not just believe, but do in your life. They offer structure to the ordinary Buddhist and how to live their life in a way that's moral or better skillful. Uh, morality is thought of as skillful action in Buddhism, refraining from harming living beings. Um, they are also important because they help us overcome the three poisons, greed, hatred and ignorance. And they are a prescription for treating the human condition, which is seen as a self-healing medicine, in fact. Refraining from misusing speech may reduce hate, for example, in the world. So finally, uh, Buddhist teaching in the six perfections or the transcendent perfections. And for Mahayana Buddhists, we find the five precepts as part of that. It's under number two, but uh, there's a much wider set of guidelines. Mahayana is keen to differentiate itself from Theravada. What are these six perfections the Bodhisattva must try to develop? In fact, being a Bodhisattva is to develop these six perfections found in the Lotus Sutra first of all, and to do so would realize one's Buddha nature. Well, we begin with generosity or giving, dana, uh, the sincere and the selfless desire to benefit others with no expectation of reward. This includes giving material goods, protection and the dharma. Morality or sila entails following the five moral precepts. For Mahayana Buddhist, uh, further five precepts are are also followed. Uh, what are the five precepts? Not to talk about an individual's error or faults, not to praise oneself and speak badly of others, not to be stingy, not to be angry, and not to speak badly of the three refuges, the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha. That's interesting. Again, wanting to differentiate themselves from having, well, we just don't, we don't have those basic moral statements. We have a further five, but they don't have typically all of the other Patmokha rules, which is a difference. Thirdly, uh, kanti or patience uh, is the kind of tolerance, forbearance, endurance. It involves the ability to tolerate and endure both personal hardship and suffering in the face of those who show you anger. Uh, there's a further term, vajra or energy. It means making courageous effort to attain enlightenment. This may involve depending on their practice or engaging in a study of the Buddha's dharma. Fifth, meditation, prajna or pana, is a spiritual experience. It opens up a person to the highest state of consciousness. It allows them to develop concentration, samantha or awareness, vipassana. Things practiced both in Theravada and Mahayana, but with different goals. 
Lastly, wisdom, the sixth, the sixth perfections is insight into the true nature of reality, which isn't the same as Theravada. It's, it's in, wisdom into into sunyata, realization of emptiness of all phenomena, not insight into the three poisons typically that Theravada say. So why is all of this important? Well, these six perfections offer a Buddhist a mean to follow the Buddhist Dharma and ultimately attain enlightenment. The Lotus Sutra said, how many bases for training are there for those seeking enlightenment? And the Buddha replied, there are six, generosity, morality, patience, energy, meditation, and wisdom. This means that Mahayana have a clear set path to attain enlightenment, the greater enlightenment to become a Bodhisattva uh, in, the, in the first sense of the two ways that Mahayana understand enlightenment. And they given guidelines, they are general moral guidelines for life to help ordinary Buddhists structure their lives, encouraging them to perform moral skillful actions, to be generous with each other and to uh, avoid causing harm. So, make sure you have a go at the topic test, have a go at the uh, Quizlet vocabulary and quotes to learn, and have a read through the model essay answers and have a, have a practice of doing some of your own model essay responses. This is video five of five in Buddhist teaching.